Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to be continuing with some of the design system stuff. I actually wanted to create a modal component, but before we do the modal component, we need to create an icon button component, which is something that I'll be looking at today. So in order to create an icon button component, you can just go ahead and actually pick the icon that you use the most as the default icon, probably place it on the right. I'm also just gonna duplicate this, name this to icon buttons and create a frame around it, expand it, grab this, also place it inside of the frame and name this frame icon buttons, also create a prototype flow, icon button. So we can also see how this button looks when it's actually uh, there or created. And then let's just go ahead and start creating our icon button component. So Obviously, any button that we have basically has three sizes, the small, the medium, the large. So usually you want to keep the same sizes for the icon buttons as well. So when you're using the small button, you can use the small icon button variant. And when you're using the larger or medium button, you can use that as well. So we need three sizes. The default size is going to be 40 by 40, which is the medium size. I'm just going to press shift A and that's going to create an auto layout. And the auto layout is automatically going to be 40 by 40. One thing that I wanna do is I wanna change the resizing to fixed fixed. An easy way to do it is by pressing command and then pressing left, right, sorry, left, right, and then up, down. That way it automatically goes fixed because you've manually changed the width and height. I'm gonna center align the auto layout here. I'm gonna give this a neutral 400 color since this is the default one. Then what's important here is I am gonna give a, or create a frame around it as well. First, I'm gonna give a border radius and then create a frame. So I'm gonna name this then icon button, and then I'm gonna create a frame around it by pressing command shift, command option G. I don't even remember the shortcuts. I have an instinctual memory of just using my hands to do that, but you'll be seeing the shortcuts on the screen. Then I'm also gonna name this icon button and I'm gonna create the component. So create the component, say this is gonna be the medium size and this is gonna be the default state. Once we have this, as you can see, we have the icon button here as well. I also wanna actually grab a tooltip and place it inside here. So I'm gonna place this tooltip inside. As you can see, we have the tooltip. I'm gonna to move this tooltip up and I am gonna move this automatically in the middle. And then basically once it's actually sitting at the edge, I'm gonna press shift uh, up to actually place it eight pixels away from this box. And then I'm gonna hide it as well. I'm, by hiding it, I'm just gonna reduce the opacity and you're gonna know why I'm doing all of these things. So we're, first of all, why I created this frame when we actually just had the icon button inside of it and all of that stuff. So I'm gonna create a new property or a new variant. I'm gonna say this is gonna be our size. This is gonna be the hover state. And these are again automatically done because I entered uh, the, it in the name, like medium slash default. So it's basically saying you have two properties, medium and default, and I basically just went, went ahead and added the property names. Now I'm gonna duplicate it and I'm gonna place it here. In this, this is gonna be the, the hover state. In the hover state, I just wanna change the background of the icon button that's inside. Uh, so I'm gonna change that to primary uh, 50 and then I'm going to change this color neutral 400 to primary 300. This is going to be our hover state and then I'm going to create another state. Actually in this hover state I also want to go ahead and actually show the tooltip. I'm going to remove this clip content so we can see the tooltip and then here I'm just going to go ahead and add the active state and let me just actually position them a bit far so we can see those tooltips a bit better and actually give them an 80 pixel spacing in the middle. So 80 here and then 80 there. Now, what's important here is after changing this to active is I wanna select this inner element. I'm gonna press K and I'm gonna say the size of this inner icon button should be 80%. And now, as you can see, the container that I have here is still 40 by 40. Now, if I did not have the container and this was an auto layout, the component size was, would change on this active state, which is something that I don't want. I want the component size to remain the same, but the inner element should basically shrink because I really want a subtle effect when the user is tapping on it. So again, I'm gonna say while hovering, it should be something like this. And then while pressed, it should be something like this. And again, it should be smart animate. So now let's have a look at how this button looks. I'm not sure why I have my image here, but. <laughs> 
So as you can see, hovering over it, and then if I'm clicking on it, there's a nice subtle touch effect. A lot of people actually just change the color, but I really like this subtle effect that actually reduces the icon in size or the button in size. So I think that looks good. Now, there are a few other things that we can do. The first thing that we can do is if we actually grab, grab this button here and place it here, as you can see, we have the size, we have the state, and unfortunately the state should not be hover the state property name should be state so again now as we can see default hover and active that's the state one other thing that we can do is i'm, I'm going to go to the component larger component i'm going to go to the properties and i'm going to say i want to expose the properties from the nested instances so the nested instance is the, the tooltip, I'm gonna say expose it. And now if I select this button, as you can see, I have these different properties and the tooltip title. So if I say this is gonna be my button, and then if I actually have a look at it, as you can see, we have the my button tooltip here. Obviously the position is messed up a bit, so I'm basically just gonna select all of these tooltips and I'm gonna say that all of these tooltips should actually be center aligned. So in order for them to center align them, I'm gonna basically say that this should be centered and this should be fixed to the bottom. So now if we have a look at it, as you can see, we have the tooltip coming in and it all looks good. Now, one other thing that we can do is not all buttons are gonna require a tooltip, right? Sometimes you have this arrow button or you have a cross button. Those are fairly simple or a trash button like delete or something. Those are fairly simple and they may not require a tooltip. So in order to have the tooltip be optional as well, you can select the tooltip, you can go to layer, you can click on the layer and you can decide whether the tooltip should be shown. So I'm gonna say tooltip and the tooltip by default is gonna be true. I'm gonna select the same thing tooltips here, gonna to go to the layer and link these, this property to all the tooltips here as well. Now, if we have a look at it, I can see, okay, here's a tooltip, my button, but if I don't want the tooltip, I can hide it. And now we're not gonna see the tooltip. So it's gonna be a really dynamic icon button, which I know a lot of people don't really do, but I wanted to show you how to do this. Now, obviously we need to do the same thing for the smaller and the larger icons. In order to do so, I'm basically just gonna grab these three and I'm gonna move them below. Since the middle one usually is this, uh, the medium one, I'm gonna change, select the top ones and name them to, name the size to small. Now that I have this small, I'm basically just gonna go ahead and select this element, this icon button, well actually I can select all of the larger elements Actually, I'll select the inner elements and there's a reason for that. If I actually select the larger elements and I press K and say that this is gonna be 32 pixels in width, if you actually have a look at it, the tooltip itself is also changing its size because you're scaling the whole container. It's also scaling the original tooltip, which is not something we want. We have a standardized way of showing tooltips. So we don't want the tooltip to resize, which is why I'm gonna press Command Z I'm gonna select the icon button in the middle and I'm gonna change this to 32. Once I've changed this to 32, as you can see, this container that I have now is obviously not, uh, uh, what do we say? It's not uh, 32, it's 40 obviously. So now we would have to scale it manually. So I'm gonna scale it like this, four pixels from the top, four pixels from the edges, and then basically, I'm gonna scale this here, 32, and then 32. Okay, so now we have this 32, and we have the tooltip. Let's just go ahead and actually show the tooltip and see where it is. So as you can see, it's here. I'm gonna press Shift up, and then we have this icon button. Now, I'm, I personally think it's much more easier to just delete these and create this again from scratch. So I'm gonna reduce the opacity. I'm gonna add it here. And this is gonna be our hover state. In the hover state, the color obviously is gonna be, first of all, the tooltip obviously should be visible, so I'm gonna uh, display it. And then this icon button, neutral 400, should actually be primary 300. The background of this should be primary 50. Similarly, I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this. I'm gonna say this is gonna be our active state. In this active state, this icon button, I'm gonna press K, should be 80% in size. So this pretty much is the same as the bottom one. Again, I'm gonna link them. This is gonna be while hovering. And this one is gonna be while pressing. 
and this should work. Now let's just go ahead and actually do the same for our larger component. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna basically, there's another way to obviously do this thing. And the other way, if you wanna do it much more quickly is you select all of these three things. I'm gonna drag them to the bottom. I am gonna select the design tab. I'm gonna name the state large, sorry, not the state, sorry, the size large. Then I'm gonna press K, which is pretty simple. And then I'm gonna change the height to 48. That way everything is gonna scale. But as I've already mentioned before, it's also gonna scale the tooltip. Now in order to revert the tooltip, I'm gonna select the tooltips, gonna to press uh, right click and then reset all changes. That way again, it's no longer gonna be It's no longer gonna be again uh, messed up in size. So now we're basically just gonna match it here, then press shift one, and then here we have our larger tooltip, our larger button as well. I'm just gonna basically grab this, make this to the bottom. Now, one other thing that we have to notice is the icon sizes. Now the icon sizes should ideally always sit at a four pixel grid or at the very least a two pixel grid. In the smaller case, I don't think it really matters because it's just again that instant where that instance where the user is tapping on it. So it's gonna be obviously transient. But for all of the other options, so this should instead of, of 19.2, it should be 20. So let's just go ahead and change that to 20. Similarly here, let's change that to 20. And Make sure that's 20, yes. Here, let's see what the size is, it's 28. So obviously we can make it 28. I think let's just make it 28 to be consistent. 28, similarly here, 28. And then obviously this should be, this can be whatever it is that it is. One other thing that we could have done is obviously changed the size first and then reduced this icon in size, but it's not really that big of a deal. So now that we have this, I think it's done. Let's just see if we have everything correct. So we have the large size, the medium size, the small size, the, the different states, whether we wanna show the tooltip or not. And yeah, I think that's that. One thing now we wanna do is we wanna make sure these properties are organized in the right way. So the small should be first, medium, and then large should be the last one. And we're gonna select this. We're gonna to go to prop star, and we're gonna say create an embedded table. Once we do that, we're gonna have all of these different variants uh, to display. I'm gonna select all of these and then I'm, I can obviously just move them, but obviously since it would be locked, I would have to unlock it first and then move it somewhere here. And here we have our icon button component. Let me know if you found this video useful, if there's something that you did not understand, and I'll see you hopefully very soon, maybe tomorrow or something in the modules video where, we're, where we will be using this icon buttons component. I'll see you later. Take care. Do subscribe and do hit the bell icon.